Hello, my name is Joe Beer and I'm with Beer Meters. And today we're gonna to talk about our phasing ranger. We've made a, two versions of our phasing ranger now. We had a PR1 and a PR2. So I'm gonna go over the PR2 version, which is the latest version. It's a newer software. And we'll demonstrate using it on our primary voltages, our capacitive test points, and also secondaries. So we'll actually do four different things. We'll take a nominal voltage reading, we'll phase with it, we'll phase sequence with it, and we'll also do phase ID. We'll set up our base unit, which again is a one-time setup. Once you set it up, you leave it, and uh, you don't have to touch it again, but we'll do the one-time setup, and that calibrates the unit in your system to uh, display the phase relationships of 0, 120, and 240. That's displayed on the meter probe that you see here, and the field unit, actually rides with you in the field, or you can call it the receive unit, it rides with you and talks to your meter probe. Once you receive your kit in two separate cases, you wanna make sure all your components are in the cases and not damaged from shipment. Um, you should have a base or SIN unit in one case, along with a auto answering device you should have the audio cable that plugs between the base unit and auto answering device, a telephone cable that plugs into your R11 or R12 jack and also the back of your auto answering device, your Garmin GPS cable that plugs into the back of your base unit and a 120 volt wall outlet that powers your base unit. In this box you should have your receive or field unit your audio cable, three and a half millimeter or two and a half millimeter that plugs into your cell phone, your 12 volt DC power cord or your 120 volt wall outlet power cord. Both of these will be used to charge the SIN unit or actually power the SIN unit. You should also have your meter probe and your associated adapters for the meter probe including your bushing adapter, your low voltage probe adapter, and your high line hot stick adapter that threads onto your meter probe. So connecting the base or SIN unit audio cable, I simply plug it in, pick any one of the five jacks into the back of it, and plug into my auto answering device. Plug your telephone jack into the back of the auto answering device. Plug your GPS cord into the back of the base or SIN unit. Plug your power cord into the back of your SIN unit or base unit. Make sure when you plug the base unit in that it's connected to the grid and not a generator backup or UPS system. Plug in your telephone line from the other side of the auto answering device into an R11 or R12 phone jack. If you're located in an area that no longer has or is about to stop providing a standard RJ11 or RJ12 telephone connection, an ATA or analog telephone adapter can be used to convert your network VoIP or voice over internet protocol into an analog connection. In this example, we're using a Cisco ATA, which has its own IP address, in our network with an outside phone number attached or assigned to it through our PBX or phone branch exchange system that is also connected to our network. Once we have the base unit set up, plugged in, and all the hardware is connected, now we can come out into the field, turn on our field unit, make sure the unit has been fully charged so the unit does not shut off while you're trying to set up the calibration procedure. You'll notice whenever I turn the unit on, I get a red power light and a white blinking light, a one PPS white light. This light may take some time to actually start blinking whenever you first turn the unit on simply because the Garmin has to figure out where it is on the face of the earth. So it may take up to a minute, maybe a couple minutes before that white light starts blinking. But once you get a blinking white light, now we can start setting up our calibration. Go ahead and take your meter probe out of the box. We do put a clear cover over it to protect the antenna during shipment. You no longer need that. 
Make sure that your antenna on your meter probe, you do see a yellow line indicated here. If you do not see that yellow line, the antenna may need to be pulled out just a little bit by loosening this SO type core connector here and pulling it out just a little bit. Make sure you don't pull on it too hard and pull it all the way out, but make sure the antenna is in good condition so it can communicate properly. Make sure your meter probe has a fully charged battery simply by holding it to the test position. And you should get a voltage display here. So this says 9.6, it's an approximate voltage. So the, the battery is good. If you do have a low battery, the battery is located behind, uh, behind the live line quick change. In this demonstration, we're gonna connect to our field unit using my cell phone here. We're gonna connect to it Bluetooth. So once you have a blinking white light, your one PPS light, we want to call our base station. I always recommend putting your speaker on Turn your speaker on your phone so you can actually hear the audible tone. Once you hear the audible tone, go ahead and turn your Bluetooth on. You'll see your PR1 data link come up on your Bluetooth. Tap the link and connect to your field unit. Once it's connected, adjust your Bluetooth volume to about 50% on your phone and then you should get a solid white light on your field unit. Once we've established connection with our field unit, we, get, we need to make sure we leave our phone, especially if it's connected Bluetooth, we wanna make sure we leave our phone in close proximity to the field unit. We don't wanna walk away with this because our connection will be lost. So I recommend just setting the phone near it or with it, keep it with it at all times so our connection isn't lost and doesn't interfere with our readings that we get on our meter probe. So once we've established that connection, now we're ready to phase. Again, phase ID, do our phase sequencing, and we'll do that with our primary, our capacitive test points, and our secondary. All right, in our first demonstration, we're actually gonna take a nominal voltage reading in this 13.8 kV phase to ground pad mount. And what we wanna make sure of is that the device is operating properly in other words, we've already established connection on our phasing ranger, but to take voltage readings, we don't necessarily have to do that. But in this case, we are connected to the phasing ranger. But I wanna put this device in the uh, URD switch position. So the URD switch position stands for underground residential distribution. This switch position is for taking nominal voltage readings anywhere roughly about 10 feet or closer to earth. So if you're around ground planes such as this uh, three-phase pad mount behind me, you know, anything close to grounded surfaces, you always want to put the device in a URD switch position. It's calibrated for, again, taking nominal readings close to earth. Also, we want to make sure the device is operating properly. So again, we want to test the device. If I hold it in the test switch position, it'll display a 510 and the approximate battery voltage. So this is reading 8.6. So that's a good battery. The 510 is an internal calibration check on the microprocessor. So if it's anything off of 510, say 508 or 514, you wanna send the device in to be calibrated. We also wanna make sure we're using the proper accessory for this application. So again, we're taking a nominal voltage reading in this pad mount. I wanna make sure I have the proper bushing adapter to take that reading. So as we insert the meter, it's gonna give us a nominal voltage reading so again, this is 13.8 kV phase to ground. Um, the meter will read a little bit high. We do error a little bit high for nominal voltage readings intentionally. Uh, but as you can see, the meter is reading about 14.6, 14.8. So again, it's within about 5% accuracy. And we're also getting an LED light. You notice our blue light is on there and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But again, I wanna emphasize this is a standalone device that you're replacing in the field. Again, I'm taking a nominal voltage reading, so the device is acting just like a nominal voltage detector. In our next demonstration, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that uh, we've just pulled conductor from our three-phase pad mount to this three-phase switch, and we wanna phase uh, from one side of the switch to the other. So I wanna put the meter in the DEG, the degree switch position. Uh, this position is for phasing all potentials. So essentially the lowest secondaries, capacitive test points, all the way to your highest transmission potentials. 
And again, the DEG is going to give us our phase angle relationship in degrees. It's not a voltage reading, it's a degree reading. And now I want to go ahead and test my phasing. If I go to the first capacitive test point, I get my red light near 240 degrees. The next phase I get my blue light near 120 degrees. And the next phase I get my white light near zero degrees. So what I've established just by doing that, the colors on these lenses of the, the meter probe is different from the color of the tape. So some utilities can actually pop these uh, lenses out and match the tape if they want to. But what I've established is I've established my red 240 is my left phase, my blue 120 is in the middle, and my white zero degrees is on the right. That's what I've established so far. And if I match that on the switch ABC, I basically have red, blue, white, okay? So if I go over here to the other side of the switch, I wanna match that. So on my C over here, this was my white light. If I come to my C over here to match, I wanna make sure I get my white light near zero degrees. If I come to the B, I wanna make sure I get my blue light near 120. And to the A, my red light near 240. So again, what I've done is I've phased this switch out. I've established that the phases are correct. I can close that switch if I want to make that tie. Okay, in our third demonstration, I want to leave the meter in the DEG switch position. So in our last demonstration, we phased from the left side to the right side of this switch. So that was a traditional corded phasing meter, if you want to call it that. In other words, this single probe replaced a corded phasing meter. So again, that's another single use device. First, it was a nominal voltage detector, a corded phasing meter. Now this next demonstration, what I want to use this device is as a sequence meter. So if I do the exact same thing I did previously when I was phasing it, you'll notice that I get lights and my phase angle. So again, this is my 240 red light. This is my 120, my blue light. And this is my white, my zero degrees. What I'm doing is I'm establishing the sequence. So if you think about what the sequence is of this uh, switch cabinet here, is my sequence is CBA, okay? So CBA can be meaningful to some utilities uh, because what they wanna know is if they're gonna hook up a three-phase motor, if they have a three-phase customer, they wanna make sure that sequence is the same. So if I say CBA, that's the same thing as saying BAC or ACB. So you can say the sequence three different ways, a three-phase motor does not care. It's gonna operate the same way. But at least I've established my sequence as being correct. So again, if I wanted to make sure the sequence was correct on this side or this side of the switch, whichever side I can establish that. All right, in our next demonstration, I'm actually gonna be over here on our secondaries, our 12208 three phase. And again, I have the meter in the DEG switch position. And in this demonstration, what I'm gonna to try to simulate is a rotation meter. So again, that's another single use device that a lot of utilities incorporate in their tools. Uh, they have a rotation meter to let them know, okay, this is clockwise or counterclockwise. This single probe right here will do that exact same function when it's connected to the phasing ranger. So what I'll do is I'll touch the X1 bushing and see what kind of phase angle I get. I get my 240 red light. My X2, I get my blue 120. And on my X3, I get my white near zero degrees. Okay, so I've established the sequence in here and then if I took a rotational meter and attached it to this secondary right here, and let's just say I connected it and it said this is clockwise, all right? I would come right behind with this tool right here, and from any point forward, I get a 240, 120, zero left to right. That's what your utility calls clockwise. So again, I can do this on secondaries or I can do it on primaries. If I went over here to this primary, or say I went to an overhead uh, build, I can actually go from road to field. If it was 240, 120, zero, that would be clockwise from road to field. 
And if it was opposite of that, in other words, it was 0, 120, 240 from road to field, that would be counterclockwise. So again, it's replacing a single-use device. It's now a rotational meter. Okay, in our fifth and final demonstration, I'm going to again leave the meter in the DEG switch position. And I want to use the device to actually ID my phases. So again, we phased phase sequence, phase rotation, but now I want to actually ID what phase is what. So I've set the base station up for my C phase to read zero degrees. So again, the original calibration of the base station, the one time setup, you can do it however you want. In other words, I can make C0, B0, or A0. So in this location here, my C is zero degrees. So again, I pulled the capacitive test point covers and I want to identify the phase. I, there's no nomenclature in here. There's no color on the conductors. There's no tape on the conductors. I can establish what phase is what simply by touching the capacitive test points. So if I pick any one of the three and I get my red light 240, I know that's not my C. I get my blue light. 120, I know that's not my C, but if I get a white light zero, okay, I've established that's my C phase. So again, I can do this on primaries, secondaries, you know, distribution, transmission, doesn't matter. I can actually ID the phase. So when it comes to things like load balancing, you know, if I'm going to add a load to the secondary tabs over here, you know, maybe I have a, a three phase customer and they're going to add a single phase load or another house is going to go on that or whatever, I can actually establish what phase is what, and based on the load on the phases, I can actually do load balancing. So thank you for watching our Phasing Ranger training uh, demonstration here. We've covered five different things with our Phasing Ranger. Uh, if you need any demonstrations in the field at your location, don't hesitate to let us know. You can contact us at customer underscore service at beermeters.com or you can call us at 803-786-4839. Thank you and stay safe.